So then today, today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. So we're going to be back here in, uh, in New York and going on again. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's first letter, Corinthians chapter 4. Brethren, let a man so account of us as ministers of Christ and the dispensers of the mysteries of God. Here now it is required among the dispensers that a man be found faithful. But to me it is a very small thing to be judged by you or by man's day. But neither do I judge my own self. For I am not conscious of my to myself of anything, yet I am not hereby justified. But he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge not before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise from God. And in the Gospel. It's taken from that according to St. Luke chapter 13. Chapter 3. <clears throat> now the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and Philip his brother tetrarch of Eturia, and the country of Draconitis and Lysanias tetrarch of Abilina, under the high priest Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord was made unto John, the son of Zachary, in the desert. And he came into all the country about the Jordan, preaching the baptism of penance for the remission of sins. As it was written in the book of the saints of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways plain, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Let's follow the word of today's Holy Gospel. So then today, the fourth Sunday after, or the fourth Sunday of Advent, the Christmas is just around the corner. And of course, this year it's only two days away. And this fourth Sunday, remember, we're primarily preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ. The focus of the season of Advent for the ancients was a primarily preparation for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's one reason why we face towards the East when we worship during the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Because we want to be facing God when He comes. And we know that that, that at the second coming, Christ said, I will come as lightning, even from the east, even as the lightning comes from the east unto the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. And that is the reason why every time we celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, we face east. In fact, we, when we go into a church where we're not facing east, we call it liturgical east, so that we're always facing east. So the north side of the altar is always the gospel side, the south side is always the epistle side, and the, and so that, and the east is always what we are facing. And so that the we are uh, always facing east when we worship God because we're facing the coming, the second coming, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, which will be from the east. No matter where we are in the world, it'll be coming from the east. The Muslims, when they worship, they worship facing Mecca. So they have to check the angles, whichever side they're on. If they're on the east side of Mecca or the west side of Mecca, the north side of Mecca, the south side of Mecca, they've got to face Mecca. Well, the Catholics worship facing east. Because no matter where we are, God is going to come from the east. And we are facing east as also a reminder that we are to always be preparing for the coming of Christ. And this thought of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ must always be before us. He shall come again to judge living and the dead. So he comes as lightning from the east to the west. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. He told that to, he spoke of his coming on Good Friday morning. You shall see the Son of Man coming in power and majesty. Advent and Advent. One of the very dangerous things about our modern conception of Advent, it is a nice and cute consideration of the coming of a child 2,000 years ago in a cave. 
And there is nothing threatening about that. There is nothing demanding about that in and of itself. It's very demanding, in fact, when we know why that child came to die for our sins. And why that child came, which was to be a king. And why that child came, which was to conquer hell and to wage war against the enemies of his father. That child came in a very serious coming. And that we might not be confused, our Lord Jesus Christ, or heaven allowed, that when he came, it scared the kings of the earth. And therefore Herod commanded that he must be put to death, so that unless we might have a misconception of the coming of Jesus Christ, God allowed that when he was a little baby, the first thing that was done was to try to kill him. He came and he was a threat. From the first moment he appeared on the earth, he was a threat, and he was a threat until his last moment, and unlike others, when he was dead, he was still a threat. And after three days, he rose from the dead, and he was even more a threat. And after 50 days, his power sent the Holy Ghost into the world, into his church, and he's even more a threat. And after 2,000 years, he's even more a threat. He's more and more and more every day a threat, and they are in dread of his coming. We are longing for his coming, and the enemies of God are dreading his coming. The great evil of our times, we will consider today. The evil that no one talks about, including Catholics. And those who do not understand how deep this evil is. We are in the time of the greatest demonic theology that has ever hit the world. An effect of it is called modernism. But the greatest theology of the devil is now in the minds, successfully in the minds of everyone, Catholics included. And it is the theology of evolution. Evolution is not a scientific phenomenon. Evolution is not the teaching of some idiot named Charles Darwin who observed a bunch of finches on an island in the middle of nowhere. Evolution is straight from hell. It is a demonic theology. It reaches into every part of our being, just like the Catholic faith. It is the mimicking of the Catholic faith. We see a little bit here in St. Leo's sermon for today. As we read in the old breviary, in the second nocturne. Dearly beloved, if with faith and intelligence we understand the beginnings of our creation, we shall find that man was made to the image of God, that he might imitate the author of his being. In us, and in a mirror, as in a mirror, the figure of the divine goodness shines resplendent. Herein lies the natural dignity of our race. St. Leo the Second, St. Leo the First, St. Leo, he speaks about, we read from his uh, sermon every Christmas, O Christian, know thy dignity, is a famous expression of St. Leo. O Christian, know thy dignity, and perhaps this is from the same sermon, the dignity of man. St. Leo the Great was the first great saint to speak of the dignity of man. Here he speaks about it. It will be spoken about again 2,000 years later in Vatican II. The dignity of man. It will be spoken about again a couple hundred years ago in the, in the French Revolution and in the American Revolutions. In those two revolutions, the dignity of man. But we are speaking of two diabolically opposed dignities. Stephen Jay Gould and another great evolutionist. Stephen Jay Gould, the other ones, I can't remember his name. Said... Consider the effect of evolution. Evolution is an evolving forward. And the idea of an evolution, what happens? Inside of me, I am a first one, several million years ago, I was a little amoeba. A little amoeba. And this little amoeba was floating around in the ocean. But there was something so wonderful about this amoeba that given time, it became a fish. And there was something so wonderful about that fish that given time, it became a reptile, and then it became a mammal, and then it became an ape, and then it became a man. Did God, or did any higher power, 
Go down to the amoeba and make him into a fish. No, I did it myself. So Stephen Jay Gould says, the consequence of evolution, the highest part of evolution is God. And we are always becoming God. And we're becoming more and more God every day as we evolve. Since there is no God, and there is nothing that created us in order, and there is no beauty and dignity in the universe, it is simply violence and chaos. Whatever is the end, the highest part of creation is God. Evolution is a heresy that appeals to the innermost part of modern man. Why? Because it appeals to our pride. The very first temptation that the devil gave at the very beginning of time was pride. He went to Adam and Eve and he told them, you will be like unto God. And now he is telling modern man the same thing, you will be like unto God. Only a modern man is more stupid than Adam and Eve. St. Thomas Aquinas says Adam and Eve weren't stupid. So therefore, the devil could not tell them, you are God. They were just created by God. And they walk with God every day. And they weren't stupid. We don't have those privileges. We don't walk with God every day. And we are stupid. So therefore, the devil can tell us a bigger lie. He doesn't say to us, we are like unto God, like he told Adam and Eve. He tells us, you are God. And since we have a little bit of a religious sense, and we want to feel humble in a mockery of God, remember that the true God is infinitely perfect, but what did he do? He humbled himself. And so what will the false God do? He must have a fake humility. And the fake humility of the modern man which is why this evolution must be condemned and why it is so demonic and must be understood for the demonic nature that it is. It appeals to the pride of man. It makes him also believe that he is falsely humble because, you know, I don't think that the world came from structure and from God. I only believe what came from science and I'm just a simple man who evolved from an ape and therefore I'm above an ape. I am at the pinnacle of creation. I am a God, but I am a humble God. It is the essence of the demonic thinking. He's entered into the mind of modern man. And the tool that he has used is the heresy and wickedness of evolution. It appeals to us. We are God. We are at the peak of creation. We are always increasing in our divinity every day. You see, God is pure act. And evolution is pure potency. They are the two opposites. According to evolution, there was nothing in the beginning. We know, according to St. Gregory, the St. Leo in his sermon today, and also we know this from sacred scripture and from common sense. In the beginning, there was everything, not nothing. In the beginning, there was the greatest of all, the Alpha and the Omega, the creator of the universe, infinite truth, infinite goodness, infinite light, infinite love, infinite perfection, and he is called God. And God then looked at the worthlessness and the emptiness of nothingness. And in His mercy, He created something out of nothing. That's the truth. And He did it in an ordered way because He's an ordered God. He did it in a beautiful way because He's a beautiful God. He did it in the most perfect way because He is the most perfect God. And all things that he did, he looked at and he saw that it was good. That's the truth. But according to the principle of evolution, which is deeper into the soul than we would like to think, it's in all of our souls. First, there was nothing. And then it exploded in a ball of fire. And it's very important that it's a ball of fire. Because the fire is the fire of hell. And it's important that it was chaos. For chaos is the name of the kingdom of hell. It is theologically important, only it's a demonic theology. It is a demonic theology by which the devil exploded in violence. And the devil exploded nothing. 
He wants to be as close to nothing as possible because this is the way we get the furthest from God. But it is a lie. Like everything the devil says, it is a lie because the devil is not nothing and the devil is created by God. But he wants us to believe that he came from nothing and that there was a demonic explosion that came from his power of his nothingness. And this demonic explosion was the greatest explosion ever. And notice about the Big Bang... Notice this. There were little bitty amoebas. And then they became big amoebas. And then they became little bitty frogs. And then they became big horses. And then they became dinosaurs and so on. Everything gets better and bigger. But not the explosion. The explosion was the biggest and most powerful in the beginning. And the explosion, right away, if evolution was logical, there should have been a small explosion in the beginning. And then more energy, and then a bigger explosion, and more energy, and a bigger explosion. But the devil cannot tolerate this because of his pride and his vanity. He is the biggest explosion of sin that happened at the beginning of the time. The greatest of sins was committed by the greatest creature God made called Lucifer. It was the greatest explosion of violence and chaos in the history of the world. The wickedness of his sin. And when he says to modern idiots... That the world began by a big bang. And what are they saying, scientists? What are they studying? How to get closer to the big bang. <clears throat> and this is what is happening today. Modern man is getting closer to the creation of hell. Modern man is getting closer and closer to Satan every day. He's getting closer to Satan in his mind. He's getting closer to Satan in his heart. He's getting closer to Satan in his body. He's getting closer to Satan in his stress. He's getting closer to Satan in his architecture. He's getting closer to Satan in his genetically modified foods. He's getting closer to Satan in every single thing that he does. Not in only one area. We have satanic haircuts. Satan is everywhere in our modern world, and every day we are longing to get closer and closer to him. And the scientists tell us we're getting closer to the Big Bang. We're getting closer to understand that moment, and to a certain extent it's true, because we're getting closer to Satan. <coughs> the demonic is the cause of this evolution. It appeals to our pride. It is the exact opposite of God's creation and God's goodness and God's truth and God's order. And it has a principle. A very powerful principle, which is self-preservation. The survival of the fittest. This is a demonic principle. It was spoken of by St. Augustine 1,500 years ago. He said two loves were the story of two loves... Two loves built two cities. And they're cities. One is called by the ancient the city of pandemonium. Or the city of chaos. The city of Satan. Who said in the mouth of John Milton. John Milton put these words in the mouth of Lucifer. He said, I would rather reign in hell than serve in heaven. And this was the beginning of hell. And notice the reign in hell, by the way. It grows. God's reign can never grow. God's kingdom can never increase because it's already bigger than the universe. The universe is too small for his kingdom. It cannot increase because it is already at the maximum. But the devil's kingdom is infinitely small when he fell into hell. And he had to try to increase it by dragging souls into hell. And he's always trying to increase his kingdom every day by souls coming into hell. And he knows that the time will come when his kingdom can increase no more. And that will be the time of the coming. The time of the advent of the Lord. Which according to the Mayans was supposed to be December 21st. So I saw, I got an internet, uh, uh, what do you call it, offer from Make My Trip uh, Airplanes in India. And it said, we have a not the end of the world sale. So since the world didn't end, the prices are cheaper. You buy cheaper tickets now. We have a not the end of the world sale. Now, the fact is, we're getting closer to the end of the world. Closer to the coming of Christ. Closer to the time when the kingdom of hell can no longer expand. It's an expanding kingdom. When you 
touch evolution, you touch the theology of Satan himself. And when you touch evolution, you touch the kingdom of Satan. And when you allow that ideology to enter into your minds, it's everywhere. Like one comedian recognizes something crazy about the modern world. I don't remember the name of the comedian 20 years ago. He says, they say we are what we eat. Well, if, we're not, if we are what we eat, how come everybody's not new and improved? Everything is new and improved. And notice the word is new first, improved second. When you are told that something is new, it's good. Something is old, it's bad. Why do we have this idea in our heads? The old order was the order created by God. The new order is the order created by Satan, which is chaos. It is called in the, in the, by Pope Innocent III in his letter on witchcraft, he says, what is Satanism? It is not an old woman with a crystal ball. It isn't palm reading. It isn't incantations. It isn't a woman on a broomstick. And even at that time, one 800 years ago, Innocent III said, beware, because the devil puts palm readers, and the devil puts witches, and the devil puts all these things in your face that you might know, or you might think that Satanism is funny and small and weak. This is a trap of the devil. It is not smutty, nor small, nor weak. It has nothing to do with witches. Nothing to do with palm readers. So said Innocent the Third 800 years ago. What is witchcraft? What is Satanism? Witchcraft, the building, the working, the forming. A craft is a, is a, a guild. A craft is a structured order of men who perform a task. You have a craft of uh, masons who build buildings out of stone. You have a craft for carpenters who build out of wood. You have a craft for furniture makers. What is the craft of witches? It is the craft of the destruction of all order. And so Pope Vincent III says, witchcraft is the ordered destruction of all order. And that's what these controlled demolitions are. The ordered destruction of all order. They got to put the bombs in the right places. Like they did in the World Trade Center a few years ago. You got to put the bombs in the right places. And then it explodes in the right order. And everything collapses instantly. Where if it's a chaotic explosion, if it's a chaotic burning, it doesn't work. It's not very effective. But ordered chaos... Ordered chaos is the order of this day. Do not think the devil is disorganized. He is not. Witchcraft is the real power. Judeo, Masonic, Satanists that rule the world today. These are the real powers behind what is happening in the world today. And they know what they're doing. It is not chaos. It is putting together a new theology, the ordered destruction of order. And Christ himself said that. He said, if I cast out devils by Beelzebub, how does the kingdom of hell stand? God himself told us there is a kingdom of hell, and it stands. Even in the land of chaos and pandemonium, there is order. There is a king. And his name is Lucifer. He's not a king, he's a prince. And there are subjects. And there is a battle plan. And there is a way they operate. And it is ordered. And God himself told us that. You can only have a war, a proper war, when there are two armies. If you just have soldiers walking through the cities, through the countryside, murdering civilians, that's just a massacre. That's not ordered. That's not a war. In order to have a war, there has to be an organized army with a general on one side and an organized army with a general on the other side. Now, there is an army on one side, which is the army of Christ the King. And there is an army on the other side, which is the army of Lucifer. And they are ordered, they are structured, and they are at war. And this battle is not only one of the flesh, it is one of the mind and one of the heart. It is a supernatural battle. Evolution is a supernatural demonic heresy. And it is a principle. The first principle of our modern world. 
What is the highest principle in our own lives? It's called the principle of self-preservation. Consider this principle taught to us by Charles Darwin, who now burns in hell, most likely. What is the opposite of that principle? The opposite of it is a God who leaves heaven to become man. A man who lives 33 years on this earth for the purpose of dying. He came specifically that he not preserve himself. He came specifically in order to be unpreserved. And he came specifically to give his life for others. And what did he say what was love? According to Jesus Christ, greater love than this no man hath than that he lay down his life for his friends. But Charles Darwin teaches, greater love than this no man hath than one who takes care of himself and his own. And this new demonic theology is in Catholic tradition. It is in Catholic priests. It is in the Catholic faithful. It is the theology of evolution, which is demonic. The devil works secretly. And what is this demonic theology in us? My duty and my responsibility is to take care of my wife and my kids. My duty and my responsibility is only to save my own soul. It sounds so good. Only it is a lie. For he that seeketh his life shall lose it, including the life of his own soul. But that he who shall give up his life for my sake shall find it. Who is willing to die for Christ? Everyone is willing to live with him. We're ready to make him a king when he's not ready to be crowned. When he fed the 5,000. We're ready to make him a king. And he ran away. He wasn't ready to be king on that day. And when he came back the next day, what happened? You said you want to make me a king? You were happy? Not because of my teaching. Not because you like me. But because you like bread. I am not a bread king. I have not come here to give you good bread. I am the bread of life. He who eats me and drinks me and drinks my blood shall have life in him, and who does not shall not have any part of me and shall have no life. Why did he speak about the Blessed Sacrament on that day? And they were offended. And they all left him. And the modern world is offended, but now the priest is also offended. The priest even says, our first duty is to live. And then after we live, then we can do religious things. Our first responsibility is to take care of ourselves and make sure that we have a place to stay. Make sure we have all the things we need. And then when we have all the things we need and when we have a place to stay, then we can go out and love God. The pusillanimity of the modern man has no place in the kingdom of God. Where was this pusillanimity put in? The devil is very wise. He has put certain aspects of his demonic thinking inside of his enemies, which are the followers of Christ. He has put the fullness of his demonic thinking inside of his friends, so that his enemies cannot fight boldly against him. His enemies cannot... If you infiltrate your enemy, and you have a control over your enemy, how can he defeat you? He cannot. This is the reason why Our Lady said at Quito... When things are the darkest, and it seems as though the devil is about to have his complete victory, this will be the beginning of my hour. When are things the darkest? Things are the darkest when the enemy is in charge of our king. When the enemy is in charge of our generals. When the enemy is in charge of, our, of all of our commanders. And when the enemy has all our weapons. And the enemy has everything. That's when it is the darkest. And we go into battle with pitchforks against nuclear bombs. Without the support of our leaders. When we go into battle like this, we are doomed. Father Arzwaga, one of our priests of the society, he fought in the Falkland War in 1982. He was there in the Falklands. And he says the English were coming, and they had anti-helicopter, you know, they had, they, what do you call it? they had um, uh, missiles for shooting down helicopters. And they were sitting there on the ground, 
And they were not allowed to pick them up, lest they shoot down an English helicopter. They had cannons sitting in Argentina. They were not allowed to bring them to the Falklands. They had cannons sitting there, ready to shoot at the English troops, but they were not allowed to fire them. When they did fire them, they fired them into the sea. The commanders turned them so that you could have a picture of the Falklands shooting their cannons. And they fired the cannons into the sea, and there was the English ship over there. And they were slaughtered. He was there shooting with his little rifle. And their own commanders, in fact, the Exocet missile that sunk the ship, it was a guy that broke it, the guy was court martialed. I believe he was court martialed. It was one English ship that was sunk because somebody actually said, the heck with this, and he flew over and he sunk an English ship. That wasn't supposed to happen. He disobeyed orders. He actually fought. The others were just slaughtered. It was just a massacre fest. They were not allowed. Why? Because their own generals, their own commanders, did not allow them to shoot at the enemy. That is what's happening now in the Catholic Church. And we're going along with it. Because of demonic thinking. And what is demonic thinking entering to our minds? We're in a different time than the past. In the past, all men were tempted to selfishness. That's normal. We're human beings, we're sinners. But we all know it's wrong. What's the difference today? The difference is that the theology of selfishness, the demonic theology of selfishness has entered into modern man because we believe in evolution. Catholics believe it's only a scientific phenomenon and it doesn't affect our faith. Yes, it is. If you're going to go on a race, and you carry an anvil on your back, and you say, well, let's run. What about the anvil on your back? Well, it's not part of me. I can run just the same. Let's run. You're not going to defeat the other people carrying an anvil on your back. You think, well, it's an anvil, and I'm a runner. What's the problem? We say, that's science, and this is religion. What's the problem? So you believe we evolved from chaos. So you believe that God created an ugly and wicked and demonic and demonic world that came from fire. What's the problem? You believe that the man who was created in the image and likeness of God evolved from an ape. You mock the incarnation. Ms. Paula Haig, one of my great teachers in the past, said this is one of the greatest evils of evolution. It is a mockery of the incarnation. It is a spitting on Jesus Christ, and a deliberate spitting, because what is Jesus Christ? He's simply a product of hapless evolution. Jesus Christ is despised by the devil, and he despises him in each way. And he gets Catholics to hold this crap. This garbage. The theology of, of, of selfishness is killing us right now. This is one of the things that we notice is very different between the year 2012 traditional Catholic and the 1970 traditional Catholic. In 1970, the traditional Catholic, like my father at that time and many others, in 1970 the traditional Catholic was, was said this, What is the true teaching of the church? That is what I will follow. And if there is no place to go to Mass, then I won't go to Mass. If there is no bishop, then I'll live without a bishop. But I will not live without my Catholic faith. I'll go find some old priest who's 127 years old and dying. We'll go to his Mass in a nursing home. And when he croaks, we'll find another one. And if we don't find another one, we will keep our faith. We will read the encyclicals. We will know the errors. Because we must follow God. What does the new traditional Catholic say? Many have called me. Father, I'm 100% behind you, Father. I just want you to know that. But we don't have Mass every Sunday. When are you going to be able to provide Mass every Sunday? I've got to think of my kids. Think about that for one moment. I agree that what you're teaching is the truth. I agree that there's modernism in the SSPX. But I've got to think of my kids. they got to have the Mass. Never mind that if they're modernists. i got to, where's your bishop? I want Mass every Sunday at 9 o'clock. 
I want to make sure there's a confirmation class. I want confirmation bishop to show up every two years. I want to make sure we have a nice church. I want to make sure it's not too far to drive. But I want you to know I'm 100% behind you. You need me, Father. You call me. That didn't happen in the 1970s. If you accepted the truth, you followed it. If you rejected it, you rejected it. If you didn't care, you didn't care. Now we have people that accept the truth, that follow the truth, but they must be prudent. Why? Because of the theology of evolution, which teaches, my first responsibility is to take care of me. Then you baptize it. You throw holy water on it. And you say, my, my duty is to make sure that my kids are baptized. But if the other kids go to hell, that's not my problem. That was not the thought of the saints. Now this is what St. Leo II, won't we'll read the rest of his sermon, what St. Leo I says in his sermon. God goes and puts his love into the world. And then it says, all flesh shall see Christ's salvation into the gospel today. Remember in the old days, it was an encouragement to the faithful. And when they would see the little baby in the crib, what are they seeing? Our salvation. And all flesh shall see the salvation. Whether you're born blind or without eyes, at the end of the world, every human being that has ever been conceived, even if he was never born, shall see salvation. Friends and enemies alike. They shall see salvation. They're going to see the Son of Man coming in power and majesty, and they're going to look at Him. And one of the beautiful truths, we had a priest retreat this week. Bishop Williamson preached to ten of us priests a retreat in Kentucky. We had ten priests of the re of resistance coming. There were about three or four other ones weren't able to come. It was actually a very good thing. On Monday to Saturday we had the retreat. But one of the points Bishop Williamson made during the retreat was, in Him we live and move and are. Not just the good guys, but everybody. That's what St. Paul tells us. In Him, in God, we live and move in our... And he says the modern idea of God is that God is way up in heaven. And we're way down here. And so we live and move on earth, and God's up there. And when you go to heaven, you live and move inside of Him. And holy people live and move inside of Him. But the rest of us just live and move on the earth. And though there's God, He's way up there. But that's not the truth. The truth is, we live and move and are inside of Him. Even the devil. Sacred Scripture tells us what is the fire of hell. It tells us in Sacred Scripture, the breath of the Lord is a torrent of fire. The breath of the Lord is in hell, breathing on the damned. The justice of God is in hell. They do not escape Him. And so the bishop drew a diagram on the wall, on the board, a big triangle. Inside the triangle, a little circle. All humanity is in the circle. You can move wherever you want in that circle. You don't ever leave God. You never escape Him. His enemies don't escape Him. His friends don't escape Him. The agnostics don't escape Him. No one escapes Him. In Him we live and move and are. Because God is bigger than the universe. God is longer than history. God is wider than all creation. God is deeper than all of our stupid, shallow thoughts. God is infinitely larger than us in all of His ways and all of His and everything that we are. We don't even make up one little atom in the space of the entire universe compared to the size of God. And we keep running. It's like the Apache helicopters, the, Apache, the American Apache helicopters, one of, their, one of their divisions has a saying on the side, don't run, you'll just die tired. So when the helicopter is coming after you and you run... You get tired, they kill you anyway. So just stand and die not tired. So the saying is, don't run, you'll just die tired. If you try to run away from God, you'll just die tired. You will never escape. No one escapes God. God is bigger than the universe. He created this universe in perfect order and harmony as a reflection of His own goodness. And He created man as a reflection of His own image and likeness. Man did not come from an ape. And he created man for his own glory. <clears throat> he created man to reflect the goodness of God and to give glory to God and to go to God. God is the purpose of man. And evolution teaches man is the purpose of man. And here's another important demonic part of evolution, which is one reason why we all live in despair today. 
Evolution is the theology of death. St. Thomas Aquinas talks about it. He says, could a man desire to be an angel? We know that angels are, don't have problems we have and they're greater than us. So he asked the question, could a man desire to be an angel? And the answer is no. A man could never desire to be an angel. Why? Because if you desire to be an angel, you would have to desire your own death. You would have to desire to not be what you are. You would have to desire to cease to exist. And this is not possible. We can desire to lose weight. We can desire to become strong. We can desire anything that does not destroy ourselves. But we cannot desire death. But in evolution, and this is why we are a people of despair in our times, evolution teaches each creature is temporary. You see, today I am an ape. And I may like being an ape. I may be happy as an ape. But it doesn't matter. Tomorrow, you're going to become Cro-Magna Man. And you may like it, walking down on the Cro-Magna Man. But that doesn't matter. The next day, you're going to become a man. And you may like being men, but that doesn't matter. The next day, you will cease to exist. This is another important point of evolution. All creatures cease to exist. They go extinct. Now this theology is in our minds. And I'm walking this world. And I believe, what do we believe today as modern men? We believe we just came from an ape. We came from nothingness. We're the peak of creation. So we should be happy because we're gods. No, because our divinity is going to end. And another god is going to take over. There's no hope. Evolution is a theology of despair. And the place of despair is hell. It is a theology of death. And this theology of despair and death has entered into the Catholic Church. And in the Catholic Church it is called modernism. St. Pius X says in his encyclical Pascendi, evolution is the law that they will keep unto death. He says it's a law that they will keep unto death. The, the modernist. It's the principle, the key, everything. And so we are all heading to despairing death. People today are so despairing. Evolution is the grave error of our times. And it has entered the Society of St. Pius X. Back in the 1990s, or late 90s, early, early 2000s, for the Ioannis group, living in the district headquarters, in our national headquarters, international headquarters in Switzerland, in Rickenbach, I believe it was at the time, wrote a book against evolution. Big, huge book against evolution. He was going to print it. And Bishop Fillet said, no, you cannot print it. You cannot print this book against evolution. He said, why not? He said, because it's an extreme opinion to be anti-evolution. And I will not allow this extremism in the society to be endorsed by the society. And so his book against evolution was not allowed to be printed. Because it's extreme. The truth is, it is extreme. They are the two opposite extremes. Evolution, the theology of hell... Creation, the theology of heaven. We call it original justice. The justice with which God created Adam and Eve and made them ready for heaven. And then they sinned. And the original justice was taken away by original sin. And then God brought back that justice. Only He even made it more beautiful. Because whenever God does things, He does things more wonderfully. And what do we say during the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass? He created man wonderful. He recreates him, reformasti, mirabilius reformasti. He more wonderfully recreates him. It is most serious, this grave heresy and error of evolution, the greatest error of our times. It is deep in every part of our being, and we must rip it out. And we find it in the Catholics today because they are following the principle of selfishness. We find it in Catholics today because they're going to distinguish and separate that's what devil is. Evolution is the theology of ripping apart. Diabolos means to tear apart, to rip apart. 
That's what the devil is. The one that rips apart. Evolution creates by ripping apart. It is by destruction, by violence, by all creatures fighting against each other through the survival of the fittest, by all this mess of wickedness, through this wickedness of creatures fighting creatures, trying to save only themselves, there comes an increase of a kingdom. And there does come an increase of a kingdom. It's called the increase of the kingdom of hell. And it's to us, it's chaos. But to those that orchestrate it, it is organized pandemonium. We are dealing with witchcraft. We are in an age in which there are real men of evil pulling the strings of power. Real men of evil coordinating the preparation for the Antichrist. And they are coordinated in an ordered and structured way in obedience to their master who is Satan. And we have decided that we don't want to be fighting such a big thing what do they say now? When Bishop Williamson said his famous horrific statements, the most horrific statements ever made since the beginning of time, and that is it's possible that six million didn't die in gas chambers. Clearly, it's against the six million and twelve dogmas of the Catholic Church, according to Pope Benedict XVI. We used to have only twelve articles of the Creed, but now we have six million and twelve. It's against the six million and twelve articles of the Creed. And obviously six million is far more important than a mere twelve. He said the most wicked statements could ever be saved, that maybe six million didn't die. Why is that gravely evil? Because six is a sacred number to the Jews. Because numbers matter. It must be six million, because it is sacred and divine to them. The six points of the Jewish star. 600,000 came out of the Red Sea in the beginning. And it is a sacred number to them. And it must be six million for symbolic reasons. Symbolism matters. Not only to the friends of God, but also to his enemies. And it was the greatest wickedness that could ever be spoken. And what was the answer of Menzingen? What was the answer of the SSPX? It's not our fight. Now we choose what our fight is. Imagine St. Paul saying, oh, that's not my fight. Oh, that's not my problem. Oh, that's not my problem. I'm going to stick with just the spiritual which of you is not attacked and I am not on fire, says St. Paul. Our fight is everywhere in the world. Our fight is everywhere in philosophy. Our fight is everywhere in theology. Our fight is everywhere in science. Our fight is everywhere in history. Our fight is everywhere on earth and under the earth. Our fight is in the stars. Our fight is absolutely everywhere. Because we are the servants and the soldiers of God who is everywhere. And the enemies are the servants of the devil who tries to get everywhere. Not bad for a wimpy angel. Lucifer is worthless, but he does get around. He gets everywhere in the universe. We are in a total war. It is a war of theology, a war of philosophy, a war of metaphysics, a war of science, a war of history, a war of clothing, a war of the food. It is a war of, of bombs. It is a war of every kind. And we are the fighters of Jesus Christ. And there is a demonic theology of evolution which must be condemned as the gravest error of our times. Of which one of its effects is modernism. And other effects are everything happening in the world around us. And it must be condemned by the theology of creation. Which is God created the world in perfect order and harmony. And when the devil came in to destroy that harmony. God was so infinitely powerful that he recreated it in the incarnational church. To which we belong. And a priest is a recreator. A priest is the one that goes around as a servant of God, finding the destroyed soul of sin, and he pours in the new creation. He pours in the new man when he baptizes him. He pours in the new man when he gives absolution. He pours in the new man when he teaches Catholic doctrine. He pours in the new man when he creates Catholic society. Therefore, the priest must be destroyed by the devil. And if you can destroy him from the inside, it's the only way. Because he had not destroyed him from the outside. The priest is too powerful for the devil. But he destroys him only from the inside. And that is what he's trying to do in the church today. He did it in the mainstream church in the 1960s. And now he's doing it in the SSPX church. We don't want to be negative. We don't want to be up. We don't want to step out of our bounds. We've got to talk about spiritual things. We can't talk about everything. 
The Bishop Williamson also said the retreat this word this week. I hate the word spiritual. I can't stand it. We go towards God. And when you go towards God, one of the effects is a spiritual life. But if we go towards a spiritual life, we will go downstream. It's like there's a river flowing south. And you go towards God, you fight against the stream. If you go towards a spiritual life and try to go straight across, you go downstream and you end up where you don't want to be. We don't want a spiritual life. Whatever that is. We want God. Not only do men need God, dogs need God. Rocks need God. Angels need God. Non-living things need God. As well as all living things. We don't limit ourselves to a spiritual life. We go with all our being towards God. What is spiritual about a vestment? What is spiritual about a chalice? God made gold for His glory. We form into a chalice. God made cloth for His glory. We form into a vestment. God made movements for His glory. We form it into ceremonies. God made words for His glory. We form into the rites of the Holy Church. Everything is made for His glory. And a priest is connected with everything. And the evil of today is the devil. And the devil has created a theology of evolution. The devil has created a theology of hell. It has entered into every part of our world today. And it must be condemned. And we must not believe that there is chaos disordered in the world. There is chaos, but it's ordered. And it comes from hell. And we buy it, battle against it. One army of soldiers of Christ against an army of soldiers of hell. And the one who will protect us and who will bring the great victory is our mother Mary. We stay with her and we're in more terrible than an army set at battle array. And the devil will be vanquished and Christ will come and there will be great victory and evolution and the demonic theology of it and the devil who created it will be no more. We'll close it like God bless you all and the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen.